So I was browsing Twitter one night and I came across one of my friends asking for help on his game. Now see, this wasn't just any game. It was a furry rhythm game. After offering the best piece of advice I could through a tweet, I DM'd him about making a charting program as I absolutely despise Unity. First things first, we need to figure out how we are going to store data. We need a chart format that the game can read and that we can edit. Now, instead of using an already made chart format, I decided to make my own and you can't stop me. To start, we need something that can convert our code data types into something that can be stored inside of a file. This is called serialization and there is a whole bunch of them to choose from. I personally prefer message back over something like JSON or XML due to how small it is. Though you should be wary, something like message spec is a lot harder to manually edit than something like JSON. In code, this is super simple to set up. You can install a library in whatever language you want, I'll be using C++, and you can start by adding these fields to all of your properties to allow them to be serialized correctly. These key fields are particularly important due to them being used to deserialize the data back into our original class. These are the identifiers for each property. Now that we have our serializer, we can create a basic outline for what we want in our chart format. We'll need a version, a vector for our timing points, a vector to store note data and difficulty metadata, and some gimmick data, along with some scroll velocities for good measure. Then we'll have metadata for the song, like its title, the artist, and any other album file the charter wants to supply. The very last thing we want for our main class is an offset so we can sync our charts, and of course we want some romanized fields for English as the game will have Japanese songs in it. We will now step into our timing point class and give it some time signature information and our BPM, along with our start beat, end beat, and vice versa for the timestamps. Now we're on to our difficulties. We'll give it a charter string to author difficulties, we'll also give it a difficulty class which will also define an enum for it up top too. We can't declare it an enum because MessagePack doesn't support that type, but it's good to have it for internal use. We'll also give it a difficulty rating and a vector full of notes. It's a good time to talk about how this game actually works now. The game is very similar to a Japanese arcade game called Ongeki. The game has three buttons that you have to press and 12 lanes where notes can be. You also have a character on top of the playfield that you can move around and you have to dodge bullets while avoiding void holes. For the notes, this is actually quite simple. We define a type and then a vector for some lane data and give it a vector of integers for the ID of our gimmick groups, which we'll talk about later. We'll have four note types. We're going to have a single note, a hold or slide note, a bullet and a playfield or a void hole. In our extended lane data class, we will overcomplicate this by making a vector that has our actual lane data inside of it. We'll have a width modifier for gimmick reasons, and of course, the beat that the note is placed. Now the reason why we are using a vector for all of lane data is because we want notes to span over multiple beats. This is for holes and play fields most importantly. Lastly, we'll talk about how to use MessageBack to read and write data to files. To save data, we can use an output file stream with a binary flag to write data. Inversely, to load a file, we can use an input file stream with a binary flag. We can then read it into a buffer, then using some message bag types, we can unpack and convert it into our chart file class. To go about showing anything on the screen, we need some way to render stuff. You can use a game engine for this, or you can use some UI library in the language you're using. It doesn't really matter, but for this project, I went for a game engine that I made for my game, Average 4K. You should wishlist it on Steam. But this is just a simple engine made with GLFW and OpenGL. Though, we won't be using it for the main UI. I will be instead implementing IMGUI instead as it's super simple, easy to use, and really, I don't want to make a UI framework. First, we create 12 lanes by literally drawing lines. Then we're gonna go ahead and draw some sprites or buttons, and then we're gonna throw all of this into the middle of the screen. We can also start adding timing functionality and beat snapping. We can create some simple timing functions that convert seconds into beats and vice versa. Beat snapping is notoriously difficult because floating point math is a huge headache, but with some relatively simple rounding, we can get a pretty accurate beat snapping function. 
Now we can add some icons or snaps and start in the arms UI portion of the application, though it's just some simple song data for now. Quick side note, for audio we're using Bass, which is a commercial audio library that I have found to be pretty good, though it does have some pretty strict licensing, so be wary about that. After this, we pretty much have an entire start to a chart editor. We can start rendering notes, which is really just drawing rectangles and vertices. And to make it simple, I made it so that the node objects all inherit the same base class so that we can make as many node types as needed. To actually position the nodes, I just yoinked my constant scroll mod implementation from Average 4 k and ultimately from Stepmania. Everything else is relatively simple on MGY code, and the rest of the features that we're we'll talking about are... A waveform is probably the most important part of an editor. If an editor doesn't have it, it's GARBAGE! The reason why is because it's pretty essential in charting live songs or anything with a constant moving BPM. A pretty awful way but very easy way that I found through some research is simply by getting the volume data of the whole song and looping through it based on a precision value. We can convert our seconds into an index to our data array and then we can turn that into a map, which contains the timestamp of when that data is and the volume data of both channels divided in half. Then, we can get away with drawing the entire waveform because batch buffering is crazy fast and we are just drawing rectangles. Though I would 100% recommend segmenting this data because long songs could really lag hard and it's just really better in general. And technically, we aren't actually rendering the whole thing, we're just looping up to the very end of where we currently are, but really we should segment this data, I'm just too lazy to do that right now. Gimmick groups are just a class that we let charters define custom behaviors like notes move. They're only shown as a thing to add to notes and they really do nothing else in the chart editor. Scroll segments are the exact same in terms of actual difference in the editor. They apply a scroll speed modifier to every note and they can also have an easing applied to them. <clears throat> and I also added this cool visualize scroll segments button that I really like. Speaking of easings, I use this handy helper class that handles all of the easing functions. I found it on a GitHub repo originally, but I have modified it quite a bit to suit my needs. I'll link it in the description if you want to have a look at it though. There are a lot of other tiny features or quality of life that I have also implemented, like a custom file extension, an edit history, and changing the speed of the song. Though, I think they're too minor and less important to cover in this video. And that is seriously all it takes to make an editor. It's a lot of fun, and I'd really like to thank Ardolf for letting me make it. Anyways, I really hope you found this helpful or interesting. And you know, you guys might get lucky, and I might be able to actually post a video in the next year. Bye-bye!